Now we're going to do something that we've already done. What in the world? Hey fellas, PV2 Smurf here. Two Smurf, PV2 Smurf here. PV2 Smurf here. Oh fellas, PV2 Smurf here. So this is not the original system or setup that I wanted. However, I found a really good deal on it. I messaged the gentleman and said, hey, I'd like to buy it. Originally priced for whatever amount, he knocked it down by like 25, 30% of what he wanted for it. I said, well, I can do that. I make arrangements. I meet this gentleman. I really just shit you not. When I got there, the gentleman was showing it. I told him uh, beforehand that I did not want the amp. He said, that's fine. I'll sell just the subwoofer separate. As he's bringing the box with the subwoofer over, he drops it, and in the middle of dropping it, well, it kind of occurred like this. So when that occurred, I was like, well, shoot. Well, the guy was so upset, they dropped it, because as you could tell, the box kind of fell apart. As you can see, they end up giving me almost nothing for the sub, and he threw in the amp for free. So you know what? This is a stereo system that we're going with, that we're going to start with and probably be sufficient for me. But today, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to time lapse it, before we actually get it put in the car, it has to be reassembled. So what I'm going to do is just reassemble this box. It's not in the most terrible shape, but it definitely has to be put back together. Uh, a lot of the screws end up coming out. since we got the box assembled like it's supposed to be i can tell you that there's a screw that was pulled out here uh looks like one over here uh, but for the most part i just see a couple screws that was pulled out so what i'm going to do is i want to use some construction adhesive this is what i got it says right on it wood in case you didn't know that's made out of wood so are other things early in the morning. Da -da. Put it down in between these cracks here. Then I'm gonna put some down in where the screws were cracked the wood. This one's not bad. This one probably go back in. Not, I'll scoot it over because with this carpet, you can't see it anyway. And unless somebody's stealing it or reselling it, they're not gonna see it either. This box put back together in the correct orientation, then I'm gonna let it set for a couple of hours. Runs clear in the creek. Smell of honeysuckle floating on a breeze. It takes me back in time. It takes me back in time. As you can see, we're just gonna let it dry. It takes me back we'll come back in time. Oh, 24 hours. Ain't no rush at the moment. Look together, it's probably set probably three days, but work. Get all this stuff off here. Have these handy, so I just laid them on there to compress it. So push the glue out where it needed to. Pride myself in using what I have at hand to do a task. Keeps you having to buy stuff. Probably save you some money. Looks like we're all good to go. I already hooked this up on the inside of the speaker. We already secured all these screws that come with it. Seems to be a lot more solid. So let's go put it in the car. You know what you call a puppy? A subwoofer. 
dad joke the other day. You're welcome. The biggest thing we got to remember is that we're not going to keep this specific amp. So we need to make sure there's room for a bigger one because I think the other one size wise is bigger. Um, the next thing is to figure out where we're going to mount the amp. I was thinking of mounting it in the rear trunk so that way everything is together. If I have to access it, to tinker with it, to dial it in or whatever. We just do something like that when you first put it in. Don't really know for sure how much tinkering I'll have to do with it. So I wanted it accessible to back here. Though I don't want to lose all my trunk space because I do use this trunk. I don't use all of it, but I do use a lot of it for stuff. So I'd like to keep the trunk space. Uh, the issue now is figuring out where I'm going to mount it. Once I figure out where I want to mount the amp at, then we can continue the rest of the process. So there's multiple places to mount it. I could mount it with some self tack screws to the metal. It's located under here. So there's metal right here. This is underneath the trunk. For some reason in Buster, he doesn't have speakers in the rear. So I could mount it up there. I could mount any bit of this metal. And the reason being is I want to make sure that I can run the wires the same route that we run a reverse camera wires to. And I'll link that video right up here for you to look at. Run the wires behind. The spot here happens to be the trunk release that lets the seat down, which for some reason is only in the trunk. Makes no sense. You'd think they'd put it up front. But whatever. I can mount it there and just run the wires that way and run them down. Run the wires in. Run them up. Like I said, the install is not going to be the same for everybody. But this is kind of the things I'm dealing with at the moment. So sort this out. Get right back with you. So my, for my mounting location, I've decided I wanted it up here. I want it this way so that way I can adjust the amp as needed. Now this is just temporary in here. Until I get all the wires run. Bought a kit, which I'll link right now on the screen. Only thing that didn't come in the kit that I'm using is so it come with speaker wire, which for, for this installation, I'm not going to use it. I will use it in the future. So instead, what I decided to do was run some Cat6 cable. Buster has four speakers in it, not counting the sub. So in, I can use this. There's enough in here for all four speakers for wires. To the specific speaker run it up here not using it yet but i'm gonna go ahead and run it have the blue wire blue wire on any kind of amp hookup is always the remote wire the remote wire is the head unit when it comes on it tells the amp hey it's okay to power on so therefore you don't end up with a dead battery i have the power cable come with the ground the ground is gray the ground itself is shorter and you'll just ground it to the chassis so anywhere in here and we'll get to that and then the RCA cables. I like that this kit come with six RCA jacks. I'm only ever going to use five to my knowledge. Uh, but there's six of them here. I'm going to go ahead and run them all up. And I could peel that off if I want. But I thought, well, what if one gets a short in it? Well, I can just take and just switch one of them out here on the at the amp. And then one on the radio. So out of those one, two, three, four wires, we're going to run these up to the front. Those are my four wires I'm running in order to get my amp wired up. Now I'm going to do something we've done in the past when we saw the radio is I'm going to unhook the radio so I can get the wires I run up here to the radio, make the connection for the remote wire and for the RCA cables that I run up here. I started to take this radio loose and I realized I can see all the wires down here. Take it loose for ease of access, per se. Well, that's a plus. Don't have to dig out that seven millimeter to get that head unit loose, do you? It takes me back in time. Oh, yeah. Won't throw my skin from the autumn sunshine. I can hear the laughter howling swift. Now just so you can get a little better idea, this wire that comes out of this radio says it's blue. Well, I know the wire right here is blue. 
But tell me that don't look purplish. I pulled the radio out and checked. That's it. That's the correct wire, so. Either which way, I'm going to leave all this loose until we verify that it works. And then we can button it up. I just want to give you a peek in here of the wiring that you don't see behind the dash. And yours probably looks like this too. The factory just puts it in a loom, makes it look nice, but it looks the same. If you decide you're going to put a stereo on one of these things, it's a massive pain in the butt to get the power wire run up through here. FYI, the power wire runs through the passenger side. As you can see, both computer modules are there. You take two, I think they're 11 millimeter loose, and then you slide the computer, both computers off. I'm gonna call them computers for simplicity. Then there's four, three other screws there, there, and there. You slide them off, and then you can pull the metal bracket off. Here's your bracket, by the way. Then when you finally can, there's another, yeah, another, it's a body clip. Pull that off, because it's holding this carpet on, or lining on, sound deadening material. And then right back there in the back, and right there where the computer's at, got my light now, you can see, right there's where your main wiring harness comes in at. We'll try to. Right there's where your main wiring harness comes in at. Right behind the computer, you can see the three little studs are sticking out that holds the plate for your computers. But that's where your main grommet for your main power comes in. It does not come in the driver's side. As you can see by my mess over there, me trying to maybe find a place. Now, if you want to drill a hole and run it through there, you can. But if you want to go through the factory grommet, it's all the way over here on the passenger side, right back there. Good luck to you, because it's a massive pain in the ass. I'm not a big fan of the way wire, because I want it to be hid. But with the length I got, this is the only option that I got. I had to pull it up and away from the manifold and run it over. Not in love with it. I may change it in the future, but at the current moment, that's what I'm going to roll with. Have to take this battery terminal loose. And that's before I do any work to any of the inside or pull the radio loose or any of that stuff. Let me take this cover off so that way you get a better view of the battery. So there's a the battery with the cover off. My plan is to grab it and just put the terminal in right over this part right here. Whenever you're working with a battery, especially the positive side, I would strongly urge you, and I may have told you this before, but if not, I'm going to repeat again. Use a long extension so that way you don't have to worry about when you're taking loose the positive side, you don't have to worry about hitting anything. Now, if you want to avoid this and you don't have a long one and it makes you kind of nervous, just take the negative one loose first, set it out of the way, and then it won't matter if the positive one touches anything metal in the car while you're taking it loose. As you can see, if that long extension, this ratchet has no trouble with making a swing and Getting anywhere close to anything that's going to hit. At least it's tight, right? So it's very, very important to use the fuse whenever you're running this amp. So that way, if it shorts out or something, it'll pop this fuse. Pulling too much power, it'll pop this fuse, and you don't have to worry about starting a fire. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be driving down the road thinking, man, oh man, i got to find me a water hose or some water somewhere to put this out with. So this is the fuse, the cover pops off, this come with the kit as well. And so the top ones, you take those loose and that takes the fuse loose. This is a 120 amp fuse. And so the way you do it is, you'll mount this, screw there, screw there, or you could zip tie it somewhere, whatever it is you wanna do. Then you loosen this up right here and as you do that, and you'll see right here as I do that, it'll allow you to slide your wire in there. But so how this works is, we'll cut that wire, run it into this, take the other end of the wire we cut, run it out of this. Then, the end of the wire will go on a connector just like the back did, which they did supply. But crimping it's a little difficult if you ain't got the right tool. That will set on our battery terminal. So let me get to that. And we'll see if uh, Pop's got a song for us. Pop, play us another song here so I can get some work done. 
That Takes works, thanks, sir. Clear in the creek.